And with us now, we have uh, Réjean Marchand from uh, ProColor Shawinigan and uh, ProColor Saint-Julie. Um, Réjean, really nice to chat to you. Thank you for taking the time to, to speak with us today. I would like to start off um, just, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the background on your business and, and the markets in which you operate? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, we have, like you said, two locations, which are pretty apart from each, uh, each other. Uh, one is in Shawinigan, which is uh, located in the middle of uh, Quebec. And uh, it's kind of uh, very rural. It's a small town. Uh, the other location is uh, based on the south shore of Montreal. Uh, both locations are about the same size, between 7,600 square feet to 8,500 square feet in St. Julie. Uh, we run the same number of tech between six and seven tech and three people in the office. So we have two locations that are up to date in terms of uh, equipment and facility. That's really interesting. So you, you've got kind of two shops that are very similar now in terms of size and structure, but in two very different regions. So I think it'd be fascinating to learn about how has kind of the, the COVID-19 pandemic impacted your business? Because obviously you've got two different communities, different populations, all that kind of stuff. So really interested to hear about how it's been this year for you. Well, actually, when uh, this all confinement turn started in uh, March, when the sh the government shut everything down, uh, we had we we're four weeks without uh, being able to work. Uh, although all our technicians were home and our staff, you know, all the staff were uh, were sent home, uh, I had the partners. And uh, in both location, and my partner, you know, they kept the, the shop open. Uh, I mean, for estimation, uh, we tried to finish the job that we had in in store. However, we couldn't get any parts to finish the job. The dealership and nobody wanted to uh, ship our the parts, so uh, we partially finished the until the government reopened everything and then we were able to uh, to get the parts to finish uh, as far as financial there's three different situation you got the short short term impact the midterm impact and the long term impact as far as the short term uh, you know when you close a shop for four weeks there there's definitely an impact there um, and the midterm is when we restarted. Uh, we didn't took everybody back because nothing was coming into the door, and so we had no idea how how, how much uh, you know workflow and how much work we would get. So we decided to start back slowly with only half of the employees, and we took a you know couple more. And right now we're probably at ninety percent of the staff. Uh, but still, this uh, we're not at 100% of our numbers that we should be and we used to be. So that has a you know, midterm impact because the, uh, all the operating costs are the same. And so that has an impact. And uh, I would say the long-term impact is all the different uh, procedure that we have put in place that don't seem to cost a lot. Uh, it's a small amount, but in in the body shop industry right now, where the margin or tiny, uh, if you put you know a, an extra tiny uh, long term expense, like uh, we're cleaning cars and cleaning offices and cleaning everything like three times more than we used to, uh, we're taking more precautions uh, precaution about everything else. So, I mean, is there any other uh, sort of procedures or things that you've learned over the last, I guess it's almost a year now that you think you will, you will continue to use after hopefully the pandemic has left us? Oh yeah. The, uh, you know, the uh, aseptizing or I don't know how you say that, but cleaning everything that people touch, this we will keep. Uh, we have a kind of a battery uh, sprayer that we use uh, every time a customer comes in, you know, bring his car, we spray inside, we wait five minutes and we can bring the car inside. It, 
it kills 90 99% of the bacteries. Uh, I think this is something for own, you know, health. It would be a good thing. And I think sort of, obviously, we need to be looking to the future and kind of from a, an industry perspective, you know, as collision repairers and, and associated businesses, um, what do you think our industry needs to ensure that it can survive and also the businesses that operate within it? I think the industry needs to be regulated somehow, whether it's government or in, industry self-regulated. Uh, today, you have shops that are running like the 80s and shops that are like us, you know, that have qualified trained people. Uh, they have the equipment, we have the facility, etc. all the software. We're following everything. Um, and the worst part of it is we're getting uh, the same job for the same money, but we're totally different world. <laughs> we're following, you know, some there. There is no system in place to make sure that the OEM procedure are followed. So whether you're a shop with no equipment or not the latest welder and the the, the equipment that you need to have to weld a new type of metal or use, you know, a rivet, the, 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 the rivet system for the uh, aluminum. Uh, it doesn't make any, it, it doesn't make any difference right now. So, you know, either shop get the same job, get the same amount of money and they're on the same level, which for me, it doesn't make sense. Great. Um, Rajan, it's been really great talking with you and thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. You're welcome.